but I keep seeing two of me. Type and delete all my feelings, I'm ready. It's five in the morning and all right, we're back once again. Hope you had a rapturous festive season. Uh, I'm going to kill the storm for the moment. Uh, there will be some moods for it, I suppose. Anyway, and there was this musical chair situation that went on with the team principals. So I gotta jump into this. All right, so Bonato has left Ferrari. Okay, the cannon. <laughs> the cannon that they're peddling to us is that um, he has stepped down from the role. He stepped away from the role. He absolutely did not step away from that role. He got fired. Right. <laughs> he absolutely got fired. Why did he get fired? Well, because he lost Leclerc's trust and he very likely lost Sainz's trust and a, a few personnel around the garage. Now, what would facilitate all of that? Well, one, the car, you see, it's in post, it's looked like Red Bull has walked this championship and, uh, well, Ferrari made it look very easy in post. <laughs> because for a good period of the season, um, arguably half the season, they had the faster car, but they didn't, well, one, they couldn't get it reliable enough, and two, when the car was reliable enough, they were a bit too goofy, either in strategy, or Leclerc had a gaff. but what really counted in the end is every moment the team had a gaff. and there's too many to actually, like, recount them through the season. Okay, there's simply too many. All I know for certain is that me as a sideliner, I'm, I'm on the sidelines. <laughs> I'm an observer. And Hungary was was the last straw for me because I mean, Hungary was just such a, a clown fiesta from from Ferrari that uh, <laughs> that that really I'm still surprised and post that. Uh, Bonato wasn't sacked there and then or some someone's head had to roll there right be it some strategist or what have you something had to happen after that Hungarian Grand Prix nothing actually happened well what did happen was that they started asking <laughs> the driver question question that was a thing that started as soon as that's happened you know I noted it then I guess I'll note it again as soon as that happened it was over for me it was over because as the pit wall is supposed to have omniscience relative to whatever information the driver can piece together from the cockpit you can't really be asking your driver a question you can ask your driver contextual questions as to what his tires are doing specifically <laughs> you can do that if all the data from practice goes out the window and the tires are behaving differently on race day, then sure you can ask the driver something contextual about the, the, uh, how the tire is doing because, well, we're looking down the field and all oh, the tires seem to be holding up pretty well. Or what are the tires doing? That's a different thing. But when you're always having to ask the driver a question, he's having to <laughs> he's having to choose left and right every single time the radio's turned on. That's a bit much at that point. And, you know, someone's going to say, oh, that's not Bonato who's asking those questions on the radio. No, it's not. But Bonato, he's hearing that radio and he's, he's allowing it. He's allowing it. That's on Bonato. <laughs> you see, Bonato should be on the blow there saying, hold on. The driver, he's already doing a hard enough job. You are supposed to give the driver simply clear-cut options or even just make a selection for the driver that the driver can't see but to ask question all the time no that's never gonna fly and they were doing the same thing with science with whatever sparing radio he got <laughs> on the curated radios radio messages that were played he was being given the same thing so never mind whatever's being played in upper management they'll have the whole team radio from the whole from the whole Grand Prix playing over there when someone says, okay, listen, <laughs> this guy, Bonato, we got to get him out of here. Listen to what's, what's going on under his reign. And they just play, and they just play the radio back from the Hungarian Grand Prix and Samatza. Or even just any Grand Prix after that, Samatza. 
So of course Bonato was fired. Right? They've let him save face because he's a long time servant of Ferrari. They've let him save face by quote unquote peddling the, this cannon of oh he's stepped down from the role. He's absolutely been fired because the optics have been too bad for him to not be fired. And in comes Vasseur. Right, Vasseur has now left Alfa Romeo to join Ferrari and he is a clear as day Charles Leclerc hire. Right, I'm pretty sure Nicholas Todd has gotten onto the phones, <laughs> onto the phone somewhere. And he said, hey, listen, my guy needs Vasseur as, as the team principal. He needs him, so go get him. You've got the form from the season. You know he's got the spice to mix it. Well, you know he's got the spice to arguably mix it with this Verstappen guy and and this Sir Lewis Hamilton guy and this George Ross guy. You know he's got the spice for it. So get my guy, his guy, <laughs> and hopefully good things will happen. He's absolutely done that. I I can't see Charles Leclerc even with whatever situations over the season he might have been um, disgruntled by. I can't see Charles Leclerc actually getting on the blow to someone, even when the CEO came. Was it the CEO or the president of Ferrari anyway? When the big wig came at the Italian Grand Prix at Monza, I'd, I'd <laughs> even if he gets Charles Leclerc like alone in a room and he says, look, tell me anything that ails you in this team. Just tell me anything, all of your woes, right? It's all off the record. Just tell me your woes. I don't even think Charles Leclerc would, would air anyone in the team out if he so had anything to say, even in that type of situation. So I don't see any, I don't, I don't, I don't think this move has been made on Charles Leclerc's word. Oh, perhaps he said something to Nicholas Todd, but Nicholas Todd has been the one to execute at the end of the day. And I'm all the better. <laughs> all the better. The type of um, optics that Charles Leclerc was putting up uh, in his rookie season. I mean, that's a crazy rookie season. That was a crazy... That, that rookie season doesn't get the, the, the credit and hype that it, it, that it really deserves, Charles Leclerc's rookie season. That one doesn't really get the shine that it's supposed to get. For whatever reason, I'm not entirely sure why, because he had a ban <laughs> he had a bananas rookie season. A bananas rookie season. The only thing that's probably stopped it from going down in the history books is is his Monaco result. <laughs> Funny enough. We're we're break fail how rare a break failure at Monaco anyway. Anyway so off the back of that season, of course, Vessi and Leclerc, they've got a great rapport with each other. And this, to me, looks like it's Ferrari upper management pivoting and placing their eggs in the Leclerc basket. Right. They were interested in this, in, in, in the science experiment, and it doesn't look like science has convinced on this season. Now, lucky for science, I think Vasu is pretty fair with both his drivers. I, 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 I don't think he's going to... Yeah, well, I don't think or believe that Vasu is going to stick to a 1-2 paradigm. I, I, I believe that if, <laughs> if science just so happens to be faster in whatever car Ferrari produced, then he's going to say, okay, we're going to race with science and see what happens. Right? I don't think he's going to suddenly try and get all the juice out of the clue or whatever but who knows we'll just have to see what happens with that all right but message to Carlos science you know the team well let me not say the team but Ferrari upper management they are not scared to pivot into a Leclerc project and that's something that the science should perhaps look out for now <laughs> with Vasseur leaving Alfa Romeo Andre Seidel has decided to leave McLaren to join Alfa Romeo. Fascinating move, this one. Right, fascinating move. I mean, Seidel, he's this is obviously his his Audi gambit. It's a hundred percent Seidel's Audi gambit. Now, it's debatable if Audi will even keep him in the role when they take over the operation full time. It's debatable. It depends how good he actually is, because 
it's very easy for Audi to just uh, uplift their, their 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 Formula E team, which is the same team that won all these Le Mans. Right? They can just uplift that team and say, okay, go go run an F1 team for us. And here are all your all, all your old buddies who we couldn't afford on the Formula E team. But <laughs> Here you go. They're all coming back for the for the F1 project. They could do that. They could just as well do that. So Seidel, he's got to he's really got to prove to be worth his upkeep to, to stay there. Like you got to prove your minerals to <laughs> to stay in to stay in that in that team principal seat at Alfa Romeo, soon to become Audi. Seidel is moving like Audi are coming in for real. So that's worth considering. But there are no question marks around McLaren's project, right? Because Seidel has so so readily jumped ship. I wouldn't have expected that. But now there are question marks that have to emerge around the McLaren project. They are covered in the fact that it's Andrea Stella who's being promoted from inside the operation, from inside the organization. So they're going to maintain the same philosophy. But yeah, for Seidel to just jump ship and say, yeah, I'm going to hedge my bets <laughs> on this Audi deal one wonders how quick McLaren will be overtaken by Audi when Audi do actually take over this thing full time or they might even get overtaken by Alfa, Alfa Romeo when Audi start throwing some engineers at this at this Alfa team anyway and the final move in terms of this whole musical chairs saga with the team principals is that Jos Capito has decided to retire from or from motorsport <laughs> I'll see we'll see how long that actually holds and now he's departed Williams I have not seen any news of a replacement for Williams I believe they've promoted someone from within Akin to McLaren but really now time starts ticking for Williams now <laughs> really really now and um if they don't get a, a, a project underway that's convincing, they might have to sell up to someone. Alright, that best case scenario for Williams right now is actually that Porsche come and give them give them a work deal. <laughs> that's their best bet right now, and then they become Porsche Williams or Williams Porsche, whatever it's gonna be. That's actually the best outcome for Williams, but it remains to be seen if that happens. I don't even believe Porsche. Did. Well, of course, they're playing this whole game that oh, we're definitely committed to getting into F1. They're all saying it. But, uh, you know, Porsche, if anyone is going to jump out at this point, I, Audi I don't see jumping out because FOM and the FIA, they've run their whole they've run their whole campaign their whole advertising campaign they've painted up the car and the audi colors and all that so they're desperate for that to happen they they wouldn't sing and dance like that without having something in writing so <laughs> there's absolutely no way that the fia would put on a song and dance like that without having something in writing but anyway anything could happen especially with with, with the way fucking the, fucking economies are going right now anything could fucking happen but yeah here we go Williams this is their last chance to learn as far as I'm concerned it probably won't be but anyway this is their last chance to learn as far as I'm concerned who takes over from Yas Capito and who actually secures Williams a a reliable spot in the midfield I don't know I don't know but it, it, it always swings back around to me to this Alex Albon interview you should never have said this you know never ever should have said this thing where he said um, Williams can't make pasta stick to the wall the same way Red Bull Red Bull do never should have said that never ever should have said that especially because he's only seeing how Williams are up <laughs> he's only seeing how Williams are operating with the real budget caps implemented 
All right, but now this this speaks volumes. This whole thing of can't make the pasta stick on the wall the same way the others do. Why is that? Well, because Williams have to go through more iterations to actually put a pot on the car. If Red Bull, Mercedes, and Ferrari can yeah, get a new wing to circuit <laughs> in, in 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 one trip to the wind tunnel, well, Williams are looking at three or four trips to the wind to the wind tunnel for for the same parts, and that's just gonna eliminate any so so-called budget cap advantage. It just doesn't that doesn't exist. And whoever comes in to replace Yos Cap, so he's gonna find that out the hard way. Right, he's really gonna find that out the hard way. I don't think Yos Capta would have chosen to retire if he was team principal of it, uh, of even Haas. <laughs> of even Haas. But anyway, we'll see what happens. And we'll see if Williams do indeed maintain something of an upward trajectory. All right, one little piece I want to close this video with. Uh, Baby Schumacher and the Mercedes link. All right, the Baby Schumacher, he's now the, the third driver, the reserve driver, the simulator driver for Mercedes. So what exactly does that mean? Is Baby Schumacher going to replace... <laughs> it's funny that it's funny now that I'm actually having to say it, right? But is, is Baby Schumacher going to replace uh, the great eight-time world champion Sir Lewis Hamilton? Uh, are Mercedes fixing to get him out of there? What's oh, what's going on? With the, okay, here's what's going on with the Baby Schumacher thing, right? Mercedes—they're the only German mark that's in F1 right now. They have the the ability to keep Schumacher, Baby Schumacher, in the space. Why are they keeping Baby Schumacher in the space? Because he's got his Schumacher. He's Baby Schumacher. That's why they're keeping him in the space. If you want Baby Schumacher, I mean, fuck being the only German marquee. He would be kicking. If he was, if if he was Adler, right? <laughs> Let's say he was Lutz Adler instead of uh, Mick Schumacher. He'd be out on the curb right now. With what he's shown, he's an interesting talent, but I mean, he can find the, you know, the next GP2. Piastri is going to look better than him. <laughs> That's a given, right? So you can find a, another baby Schumacher in GP2. It's not difficult. That ain't difficult. So why has baby Schumacher been kept around? Because Mercedes are the only ones with the 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 interest to keep him around because he's Babe Schumacher, the last the son of the last well, there's Vettel as well but I mean he's not Schumacher, isn't he? the son of the last real legendary German driver that's why he's being kept around and they're hoping alright, Mercedes are hoping, even the FA are hoping that Baby Schumacher can sponge enough from the great Sir Lewis Hamilton and George Russell and fill out his driving boots just a bit enough to at least survive in the space of F1 <laughs> and not be out on the curb after two seasons just enough for that I mean look here's the thing with baby Schumacher Joe is better than him Joe is better than him I really like Joe but he's never gonna win a championship he might win a Grand Prix but he's never going to win a championship. And Joe is miles in a way better than Baby Schumacher. Now people are going to say, oh no, Baby Schumacher, he did win the GP2 and all of that. Okay, I'm calling it GP2, whoops. Okay, Baby Schumacher, he did win Formula 2 and all of that. So? That don't matter. <laughs> that don't matter. If that mattered, then... Uh, I mean, if that mattered, then it would matter that uh, Maximilian Verstappen didn't touch Formula 2, right? It would matter, but it doesn't. Okay, maybe Schumacher was good enough over a season to win a championship. It wasn't the most uh, emphatic of championship wins in Formula 2, but he won one. You know, 
bravo to him but you gotta be different gravy to mix it in this formula one thing long term but anyway Mercedes, they're hoping to cook up baby Schumacher, make him a serviceable driver, maybe a race winner. He's never going to win a championship, I'll tell you that right now. They would, they would really have to... <laughs> they would really have to cook the season for baby Schumacher to win a championship. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. You'd have to have uh, Mercedes supplying engines to like... To six teams on the grid. <laughs> Yeah, including themselves, but you, you'd have to have a situation like that. And those teams would have to be good enough. Those teams would have to produce cars good enough to get ahead of, well, any other engine manufacturers. But not so good that they get ahead of whichever team Baby Schumacher is on. Uh, that would just be like, if you see, if you see everyone picking up Mercedes contracts, in a few years time you know what's up anyway <laughs> anyway so it's very unlikely that that I means even less than unlikely right it's it's beyond improbable that baby schumacher is set to replace the great sir lewis hamilton eight-time world champion in any sort of fashion it's more likely if sir lewis hamilton were to call it a day anytime soon it's more likely that Mercedes are going to jump for Charles Leclerc, Maximilian Verstappen, Orlando Norris in no particular order. It's more likely that happens. Absolutely not with this Baby Schumacher thing. Baby Schumacher to Mercedes? <laughs> the race seat? Never. Never. Never in a million, bajillion, trillion years. Not even the most racist of the racist white men this is why I don't even do the racist thing bro. not even the most racist of the racist white men would even fathom that one baby Schumacher replacing so that the unthinkable you're not even that good anyway <laughs> anyway now that should be the vert thanks for watching thanks for listening peace Breezy. Let me show you how to keep the dice rolling when you're doing that thing over there. Hey, 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 let's go. Cause I'm feeling like I'm running and I'm feeling like I gotta get away, get away, get away. But I know that I don't and I won't ever stop because you know I gotta win every day, day. Go. See the really, really wanna pop me. Go. Just know that you will never pop me. Go. And I know that I gotta be a little cocky. Go. You ain't never gonna stop me. Every time I come a nigga gotta set it, then I gotta go and I gotta get it, then I gotta blow and I gotta shut it. Any little thing a nigga think that he be doing because it doesn't matter because I'm gonna dead it, dead it. Then I'm gonna murder everything and anything about it. Let's go. See the way we on it and we all up in the race. And you know we got it going on, try to keep up with the pace. And we struggling and hustling and sell it in the game.